Well, I've got a little work to do with the throttle cables, and then I want to start working on the electrical, and uh, we'll eventually move into our wiring. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. Okay, so I got the clutch cable connected and rather than solder, I welded that barrel on the end of the wire. That is holding much better. We're all connected down here. Maybe a little fine adjustment required there down the road, but uh, you know, basically all put together. Then uh, started working on the throttle. Sorry, I've got the tank on here so you can't see things. So on the throttle, uh, I know this is a custom job where I am shortening the cable, but some of you guys that are following my series are restoring a uh, Suzuki and you're not shortening cables. And uh, you know, basically hooking these up is get this end in right. This one here that pulls to open the throttle, that one is this guy and goes up over the top, hooks up here so that as you turn, you know, as this goes this way, you are pulling the throttle open. And then obviously the other one is the return, uh, which goes on this side of this bracket that holds those two. So I hope that makes sense for those of you that are just doing a restoration and not a cable shortening. So I want to get this battery mounted in here. And I was thinking, one, this is a AGM absorbed glass mat battery, so it can be set on its side. And at first I was thinking I could just use the back of the frame, uh, you know, the hoop here to have, you know, one point that it could be pressed up against. But then I got to thinking, well, no, my cowl comes down there. So it does need to be up and in a little bit to make that clearance and I have determined that this is sufficient here and, and that way this corner does not touch as the uh, cowl comes down and then I want to bring it to this side some because I want to leave space here for the potential to install a capacitor bank in the future. I intended on putting in these capacitors for just a little bit extra oomph uh, in starting. Um, these won't hold a lot, but they'll, they'll probably, I don't even remember how many uh, cold cranking amps I could crank out of these in a short order. It's, I feel like it was a good 75 to 100, in, you know, at a short burst. Um, but I dropped this and I don't want to trust that it's going to work. Uh, I need to test it. So for now, I'm just going to mount the battery without this in here. And this battery may be sufficient because I intend to use the Kickstarter for the most part. So what I want to do is build two little brackets that the, this will sandwich in so it won't slide forward and backward as I brake and accelerate at the speed of ludicrous. Okay, so um, there, and then I need to put some kind of a strap over to hold it down. So I really need four little brackets here and here. And then I found this little strap that I can fashion in some way to hold it down. So I just found some scrap um, 16 gauge sheet metal this might be 18 gauge it's pretty thin but rigid enough for what we're doing here uh, and I just cut out kind of some almost rectangular shapes I uh, need to true these up a little bit but not really I mean this is not cosmetic it's purely functional so I don't care how uh, aesthetically pleasing these look and I just need to make little retainer brackets and the intention 
is to pop rivet these into that electrics tray to hold them in place. Okay, so these are 3.2 millimeter rivets. Really doesn't matter what size you go with, but just know your size and pick the right drill bit. Uh, this is 1 8 inch, which is the same as a 3.2 millimeter hole. Okay, so I've just rounded off the edges and squared these a little. They're not even matching yet, but really doesn't matter. I just want to make sure that I have a 90 degree bend on these with enough room for a hole drilled for those rivets. could have put it in there straight. Let's try that again. Let's see if I'll get two chances with this before the metal fatigue becomes too great. I might snap it this time. Alright, so don't be a boob like me and Get your eyes down where it's level. That's better. When I hand hammer metal like this, and I'm no expert, I tend to use kind of a drawing technique. So what I don't want to do, what I want is a tight corner. And you want know, a sharp 90 degree. And if I just whack away at the top here, I don't bend it that sharp. But, so I kind of use a drawing hammer and force like this. And then once I got it flat, then I can focus right in this spot, not on the ends. So anyways, that's how I do it, for better or for worse. So cutting the slot, I want a slot wide enough for my strap, which this one is. Then I just want to cut a couple little corners here. Which I'm going to do with a chisel. Or at least attempt to. What I'm attempting to do here uh, is bend that out and create a slot, but also a round point that's not sharp. 
if that makes any sense. Problem is, is it, it cracked here. But I think I could fix that with a little spot weld. There we go. So now that I've got it bent over on itself a little bit, now I can just hammer that down flat and I'll have a nice round edge on the inside but I do need to fix that crack there all the way through. And I'll just spot weld it and then grind it down. smooth in there and it won't cut at the strap. So there I repaired it and that should fit my strap now. Yeah, goes through. Well, so that's one end. Drill some holes for rivets. And then these guys need rivet points. These two, no slot, because they're just going to steady the battery. Essentially, we're, we're going to box it in from four sides. Just pilot holes right now. Okay, so the time to check whether or not we have enough clearance for that battery position is now and not later. Frankly, I can see I have plenty. In fact, I can come all the way to the back here, so I'm gonna go right there. I mean, plenty of good that I went as vertical here as I did instead of too sharp. Now on these with the strap, I don't want it so snug against the battery that there's no room for the strap and it's, it's a press fit. So I'm going to just back off a little bit from the battery because after all the strap is going to hold it down.
One problem I can see I'm already going to have is that uh, the rear wheel is in the way for riveting these from underneath, which is where I'd like to do it so that it's well hidden. So that's essentially it. That's where my battery is going to live and I just need to uh, drill some holes, get some pop rivets out, remove the tires so that the pop rivet gun will fit down here. And then we got to work on the strap and how that will connect to these two guys. So I'm just sewing this strap on to one of the ends that I created by, um, sorry this glass table is not a good place to be focusing. And I'm just hand sewing it. I do have a sewing machine but it's such a small job I thought I'd do it by hand. And I'm using a thick, what they call carpet or button thread. And so it's a relatively thick um, thread here and black of course. And I'm just going to do kind of a square pattern and then an X in there like you see so often with straps of this kind. Okay, so this is one side of it and then I just have to do the other side but essentially we know this part and I'm going in this direction. This is difficult one-handed. And uh, wrapping it around this way so that the loose side will be threaded, you know, to, toward the battery. Yeah. Okay, now I've got these hold downs that I built. Uh, I painted them black just because, uh, because this brown is a little bit more difficult color to get a hold of than the black and nobody's going to see these so it was more about protection than um, color. And I've got both of these tie down straps ready to go and I'm just going to pop rivet them into place. Okay, no forward and back, no side to side. Got this little clip here. And the key with this is I want it to go from the top and pull it down. Because then when I pinch it, the more it pulls, the tighter this thing gets. So. Could snug that even better. There we go. There. That's not going anywhere.
So thanks for watching you guys. Hey, if you like what I'm doing, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to become a monk. Thanks for watching.